So good afternoon everyone and uh, welcome to the channel. So today I'm going to be working on my car. I know, first thing I want to say is the car is back in the garage. The silver vet that belongs to um, um, to Glenn is no longer here. It's getting his body work done. So now I'm back in the garage. I still got to reorganize everything. But today I'm going to be working on my brakes and my rotors. So my front, quick little background. So my front has HP uh, Plus rotors, which is from Hawk Performance. Um, here's the box right here. <clears throat> HP Plus 247, you know, and yada, yada, yada. Basically, I put those on for the track day I was going to do at Texas Motor Speedway at Lone Star Street Car Club. I mean, Lone, not Lone Star, with uh, Lone Star Corvette Club. And I've left those on. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do rear pads um, with the same brand. Um, got them right here. Hawk, Hawk, Hawk packs. They're going to be HP Plus, as you can see right there. I'm going to go ahead and do the rear on those, which is a relatively straightforward job. But however, since I've been using like stock OEM type pads, there's some glazing. You probably can't see it. But, you know, it's like highly shiny. It's not the way it's supposed to be. So there's been some glazing done from the previous brake pads from them overheating from my drives. So what I'm going to do here is I have this tool right here. And I'm going to kind of like hone. It's not necessarily a resurface, but try to get rid of some of that glazing. What this will do is like put a bunch of swirl marks on it and break it all up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break the lug nuts loose. Then I'm going to jack up the rear end, take the tire off, and then uh, we'll take the bracket off, then the rotor, and then we'll get to business. So let's go ahead and get that going. All right, everyone. So I got the car up. And what you want to do is you want to have a car kind of nice and high, more than what you need. Because to take the caliper bracket off, um, sometimes it requires a lot of leverage. And this is the caliper bolt. This is one of them right here. Um, it requires like a lot of leverage like um, on it. I've already done the passenger side and it required me to use my leg muscles and everything and I'm laying on the ground just to get these bolts broken loose and it, it is a real pain. Um, but this side's going to go a lot quicker because I worked on this side before. I didn't put it in a video but you can see there's damage already on my rotor surface. I know this isn't perfect. Everyone's going to make little notes and complaints and yada yada yada. I don't plan on keeping these rotors long. I plan on switching out maybe in a few months. This is just cosmetic damage. It actually gets covered up by the wheel. I don't like it, but the rotors aren't going to be here forever. It's just a temporary thing. So, and I'll explain where these came from because I already did it on this side. I mean on the passenger side. So the driver's side isn't going to take that long because I already broke it loose. Um, but yeah, let's go step by step. So, first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the caliper bracket off, which is this bolt. And there's another one um, below it. It's not going to be as hard because I already did it before. And so let's go ahead and take that off real quick. Okay, both caliper bracket bolts are off. As you can see, these are pretty big bolts. Here's my finger for reference. Um, as you can see, I already had anises on there. So they can go on and off a lot easier than what they were before. But those two are off. So the caliper is completely free with the actual... Uh, the caliper bracket with the actual caliper completely free so I'm just gonna lay it up here because I can work on it without having to take the whole thing apart uh, so what the next thing you're gonna do is want to take this ro I'm gonna take this rotor off and I had a lot of trouble taking the rotor off on the other side and I did on this side too as well so initially what I did is I put little nuts uh, I put the lug nuts on here and I hit it with a hammer hit in the hammer in different spots because what I'm trying to do is break this rust, this ring right here of rust free. I also tried prying it with a crowbar and also a pitchfork that I had and also tried hitting it from the back. Event and I also tried um, tightening the lug nuts all the way down to try to make it sink in a little further. I don't know what worked the best or if it was a combination of all of them but I think on the passenger side definitely what got it loose was doing all that and then finally going in the back, covering up the surface of the rotor with a towel and hitting it from the back and and being able to get it free that way. So as you can see, this is already nice and loose. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this off. You see there it is completely off. 
I'm gonna set it up here. So, what I did um, after I put it on last time is I put a little ring of grease on here so it can easily come on and off again. But the next thing we're gonna move to, so now that this rotor's off, let's get my light going. Okay, so this is gonna be my workspace. So if you can see, this has a mirror finish to it. Like you can see myself, you can see the camera, you can see all sorts of stuff. It's not supposed to have a mirror finish like that. So what I'm gonna do, is gonna use this tool that I got off of Summit, um, Flex Hone for rotors. Basically what I'm gonna do is make this shiny finish go away and put a bunch of swirls in it and kind of make it, you know, deglaze it basically is what I'm trying to do. So let me go and get the drill set up. And what I'm going to do is this, I'm just going to sit on here and I'm going to work it around a couple of times and then flip the other side and work it around again. Alright, so let's do a before and after. So, before you can see here on the back side how shiny it is and here is the front side and now you can see it's all you know I don't know the word for it scarred up rough surface not all shiny and mirror like so that's what we're going for here so let's go and knock out the other side and then stick the rotor back on Okay, we did front and back side, and um, I cleaned it off with some brake cleaner just real quick, and definitely the rough, non-really mirror-like surface I'm looking for. So let me go ahead and slide this on real quick. Okay, actually, I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to put some grease on this bearing right here this on the hook okay so that's on next thing I'm gonna do is you know pretty much I think I've shown this pretty much on another video how I did front brakes but I'm just gonna remove these two brake pads and I'm gonna slide in a new HP plus um, pads and Call. See, these still have plenty of meat on them, you know. These are actually the ones that uh, Jesse gave me. So when I had the wheel off earlier, I've gone and the bracket off earlier, I went ahead and put his pads on there. But I'm going to go ahead and put these uh, HP Plus on here. Uh, they're definitely going to give me a lot more performance. One thing you're going to need um, while you're doing this, is you can see the piston here on the caliper. Uh, where is it at? This right here, this big circle. You're going to want to try to get a You want to try to get a C clamp and you're going to try to put it here on the either in the center but most likely the ring. You're going to want to depress this piston back far enough so that you can get the pads in there and fit it over the actual rotor. So I'm going to go ahead and do that next and then I'm going to lubricate the metal hardware which are these like um uh, where they are? Got to pull one off. Like it's one of these metal clips. You can't really get it. Let's see. I'm gonna clean this up with some brake cleaner. Both of these, right here. I'm gonna clean them up with some brake cleaner. Then I'm gonna put some grease here in the middle and uh, put these back on. Cause the new one, the new pads didn't come with any of this hardware, and I just don't know why when it, they're supposed to. Um. That was a good way to cheap out on like five cent parts, but let's go and do that next. Okay, so I got the pads on there. One thing I did because I was having some, because I was having so much issue keep getting the pads in there, is I'll go ahead and broke off the clips. Um, these clips kind of are indicated to let you know when your pads are too low, but I'm very good on 
looking at my pads and, and stuff like that. So I'm, I just broke the clips off. I broke them off on the other side too. It makes it a really tight fit um, if you leave them on there and it just causes so much headache. So I got sick of messing with it. Just broke it off. I think I've broken it off on every time I've done pads just because it's just a headache. But other than that, it's pretty much straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and tighten down the, bol the bolts on the back um, for the caliper bracket. Then put some anises on all the lug nuts, torque them all down to 100 pounds, let the car down, um, uh, break in the brakes the proper way, um, and that's it. If you haven't been to the channel before, please like, please subscribe. If you have any questions on specifically why I did certain things um, and how everything is working out, just go ahead and ask. Uh, but thank you for watching.